My name is Hal Gregerson. I'm the Executive Director of the MIT Leadership Center. Today we're talking with Tom Koken, a professor at the MIT Sloan School and author of a new book, Shaping the Future of Work. And we're delighted to be able to visit with you, Tom, about this book and all of your work in terms of leadership. I'm delighted to be here, Hal. This is a great opportunity to talk about things we care about. No, it is. And, um, you know, if you think about not just this book, but literally, a lifetime of having researched the intersection of labor, employment, work, leadership. What's the most important message that you have for leaders out there today? Well, today in particular, there's such a deep need to bring people together. We have so many divisions in our society, in our workplaces, and in our personal lives that we need leaders who can bring people together to resolve problems, to build consensus, to mobilize action, and then to actually make progress in dealing with the difficult challenges people feel in every day in their workplace, in their family lives, and in their communities. How do you help people do that? Because you're right, you know, we live in a world where we often live in silos, not only within organizations, but across industries and sectors and so on. How do you help leaders do what you just described? Well, I come out of this field of work and employment, and our field has done this for decades, if not centuries. Mm -hmm. That is, we, we learn to mediate, to bring people together, to negotiate with respect, to respect each other's differences in responsibilities, in points of view, in backgrounds but to listen to each other, number one. And number two, then to begin to ask, well, how can we begin to address your real concerns? What experiences led you to realize how critical respect is? Because obviously it's core to yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, I think it, it actually goes back to where I grew up. I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin, yeah. a small dairy farm, very marginal economic existence, but in a community where everyone had to work together. As a child, you worked with your siblings and with your parents to make the farm function. You worked with your neighbors because neighbors had to come together at harvest time to help each other because time was critical and they had to figure out ways to take turns to, to get uh, the job done in the summer, to make good uh, use of a very short uh, harvest season. So I learned to respect work, hard work, working together, resolving differences and figuring out that by doing that you could actually uh, benefit the whole community. So you, you move from something like that to the world of shaping the future right. of work, your new book. Writing a book, as you well know, is a lot of work. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. And what is the point here in this new book? Why did you care so much that you put the energy into this? What, what are you trying to tell the world? I'm deeply concerned about the economic mess that our generation is leaving to our children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. We could be in a situation where it's the opposite of what we used to call the American dream, that every generation should be able to improve on its standard of living uh, compared to the standard of living of their parents. But today, if you look at the real conditions facing young people, Wages haven't grown for 30 years. Inequality has increased. We're not creating enough high quality jobs to meet the needs of our high school and college graduates. Uh, we have all these divisions in society and polarization between business and labor and politicians who uh, don't really want to address the problem. I know it's impossible to distill down to two or three points in terms of suggestions for leaders in a sense that this is what you do and things magically happen. Right. We get that. But what are one or two of the things that you think are the best recommendations of starting points to, to get out of this mess? There are really three things okay. that I believe need to be done. Number one, we have to get business following strategies and leading organizations in ways that both produce good financial returns for shareholders and produce good jobs. And there's lots of evidence about how one can manage to achieve that. But it requires real leadership and it requires a strategy that says we're going to build 
uh, on investing in workers, we're going to mm -hmm. pursue high productivity and innovation. Mm -hmm. We're not going to treat labor as a commodity, as a cost to be minimized and mm -hmm. controlled. Mm -hmm. Number two is we've got to find ways to rebuild the bargaining power of employees. Our field of labor management relations is built on the assumption and strong evidence that workers need a voice at work. Workers want a voice at work. They want to have an impact on how they work. They want to have some control over their working conditions. And they want to make a difference. And they want to do that in a cooperative way. Mm. Not, they don't want to have to go to the barricades to uh, be respected and to be listened to. And they want their interests in, integrated with the rest of the business strategies and the organizations. And then probably the most important thing is it's not enough for business leaders to, to address these issues, and it's not enough for workers to address these issues individually or collectively. We've got to bring them together. Mm. We've got to find ways to get businesses, government, educators, mm -hmm. workers all on the same wavelength, mm. recognizing they have some different interests, that's fine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then leading and negotiating and working through those differences for the common good. And those three things, I think, are the, the keys to making progress. Well, Tom, thank you very much for your Good. time today. Good. Well, this has been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.